check this out. Look what's just getting in. Sheesh. Good to see you. Hey, thanks again. I appreciate it. Wow, I cannot believe we got our hands on this bike. You'll only be able to get this from dealerships, and the dealerships won't even have them for another month. Before I unbox this, I need to move these Talarias out of the way. They're taking up so much space, but that's okay because I'm giving these away in two weeks. Very few people have entered this giveaway, even though there's three bikes up for grabs. So if you'd like to take one of these home, you got two weeks left to enter the giveaway in the description. Now let's open up this bike. The last time I opened a crate like this, I got, uh, let's say, ketchup all over my hands. So this time, I'm gonna be extra careful. This thing is like a knife, it's so sharp. Let's go! This is the first production unit in the US. The frame number is literally 00001. These will be available in about a month at power sport dealerships, but you won't be able to order one online. And I'm starting to see why. Gringer built this bike like a motorcycle, not an e-bike. This is no longer gray area like the Suron. You can see the brakes, forks, and frame are motorcycle tier. It's a cable throttle, and even the rear brake is a foot brake, which you just don't see on e-bikes. The S in G3S stands for Supermoto, which is a title this bike earns coming with 12-inch Supermoto wheels out of the box. Besides the three Talarias I'm giving away, which do come with street wheels, if you want one, you can enter that giveaway, it's really rare to see a street-focused e-moto like this. Now it's not street legal, yet they're working on that. For example, it needs lights and everything. This bike is designed for track racing. At 72 volts, six kilowatts, this bike should be exceeding 50 miles per hour out of the box, which is getting me way too excited to keep talking. I haven't even turned it on yet. Let's see if the wheel spins. Here we go. Very first ride on the very first G3S in the country. Frame number 00000001. I'm already in love with this seat. This is the most comfortable mini seat I've ever sat on. Here we go. Put it up into full power here, mode three. Full throttle. Oh, we're taking off. This feels so solid. Before I use any more battery, let's do a top speed run. Well, the foot brake I have to get used to. I'm gonna do three full throttle runs. Using a draggy, I'm gonna measure my zero to 20, zero to 40, and top speed, and then average those out. So here we go. Full power, full throttle, three, two, one. Whoa, nice takeoff. Okay, according to my calculations, the G3S is faster than the Saron X. It's faster than the Talaria X. It's faster than the ETM Mini 5000. And it's just barely slower than the Talaria Sting R by like half a mile per hour top speed. This bike is fast. This is a fast bike. And I, you know what? I kind of like the foot brake. Just really easy, but it makes the handlebar feel absolutely naked right here. I keep wanting to grab for a break. Here we go, Mo3 full throttle. Super powerful off the line. So I'm familiar with Gringer bikes because if you don't know this, the Honda CRF E2, the electric Honda mini bike is a Gringer. It's a rebranded Gringer. And I think that says a lot about Gringer as a company. If you've got Honda putting their logo on your bikes, they can't be that bad. Although it does slow you down to mode two if you pin mode three. Maybe that's some kind of temperature throttling or something, but that's actually kind of annoying. And another annoying thing about this bike so far is say you come to a red light like this, not that you should be riding in the street, but say you come to a red light, let's see how long before this takes to go from zero to OP. Okay, that was like, what, five seconds? If you're at a red light, it's gonna go to OP, which means you have to press this yellow button before it'll run again. That's annoying, especially street riding. You don't want it to be turning off on you every single red light. Now, I think the CRF E2 does that as well. 
it's a, probably a good safety feature if you're racing so that if you leave the bike nobody just comes and twists the throttle so in theory it's a great safety feature but in practice it's pretty annoying the brakes are just look at that foot brake just locks the wheel i don't know about wheeling this yet i've never wheelied a bike with a foot brake see it keeps going down into mode two those are my only two complaints so far. It switches down to mode two, and you have to press that yellow button every like five seconds, you leave the bike still. As far as wheeling, I only ever wheelie with the left hand brake, or on a pedal bike, I have the right hand brake. Foot brake it scares the hell out of me. I feel like your feet just aren't as coordinated as your hands. That's a me thing. I don't think this bike has the type of throttling that you'd really want for wheelie. Not only does it switch down in power every couple minutes, but it's just not the type of snappy throttle response you might expect from, you know, a 72 volt Suron or the ETM Mini 5000. This is more of a, it's, it, trust me, it's powerful off the line, but it's, it's more gradual than some of those other bikes, which I think for racing may be a good thing. I'm not a racer. For wheelies, you kind of want that snap. See, it's putting me down to mode two. You know what other bike does that? The Saunders Metacycle. You can only be in sport mode on the Metacycle for like 30 seconds. It's a normal e-bike feature. Most of the bikes I ride don't have it. So I kind of wish this just stayed in power mode three because it's powerful in power mode three. The thing I noticed the most so far is the smooth seat. This is super comfortable. I need to put it side by side with some of the other bikes I've been comparing it to, like the ETM Mini 5000, maybe I'll put it right here. You can see the seat on the ETM. I call them a one cheek seat. You have to choose which butt cheek you put on that seat because if you decide to put both and split, you're gonna regret it if you're riding for more than like 15 minutes. This seat is a two cheek seat, I would say. I kind of feel like it's the right size. Like if I were to decide what's the perfect size Emoto, it's pretty much this. And the battery on this is actually pretty big. It's a 72 volt, 35 amp hour battery, which is more watt hours than the Suron battery, which is 60 volts, 38 amp hours. But we're also pulling more from it. So range wise, I'm guessing it's between that 30, 40 mile mark we see on the Surons and Solarias but range is something I'll have to test on this. It's starting to get dark and this bike doesn't have lights, so I'm gonna take it out tomorrow. I'll see you then. It is a beautiful day. We've got the new Granger G3S and the Talaria Sting R. I'm out here with Jimbo. What's up, Jim? <laughs> gonna go hit the streets. We're gonna start off with the drag race between these two bikes. So here's the drag race. Fully charged Gringer G3S against a fully charged Talaria Sting R. Jim is about 30 pounds heavier than me, so definitely keep that in mind, but this will just give us a good idea how these bikes compare off the line. So Jim, you wanna count down for us? Yep. Oh, it's close. It's neck to neck. They're like exactly the same. This is pretty cool. That was so close, we have to run it back. That's cool. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. <laughs> that actually was a way stronger start than I was expecting. Three, two, one, go. Oh, we are so close. But he's 30 pounds heavier than me, so the Talaria is it's winning these bikes are almost exactly the same price this bike is nice this bike is super comfortable to sit on it's the perfect size for me i'm like five eight and a half by far my biggest complaint is the fact that it just switches down to mode two and it goes into this op mode where you have to press that yellow button if you don't ride for like three seconds but those complaints can basically be fixed with like a software update as far as the bike itself it really feels premium like it feels like you're on a really nice bike it's grounded the seating position is comfortable it's actually a heavy bike it's 150 pounds which makes it heavier than the talarius thing are but being heavy uh, as a street bike it's kind of nice. I mean, you're grounded. It's not nice moving around your garage and all that, loading it in the truck. But you're also going 50 miles per hour, so you don't want to be feather light. And so far, lots of range. I've been ripping and the battery's barely going down. Although the battery meter only shows bars as opposed to percentage, which uh, is not ideal. I think it should show the percentage. Oh, this is a sweet canyon spot. Hey, oh, what do we have here? Yellow jackets. Yellow jackets. Yeah. Look at this spot. Oh my God. 
it's, it might be a winter type spot. This is the coolest spot I've ever seen. You got all the, the concrete banks on the sides. Whoa! Dude, this is like a dream spot. The spot. It's like a little canyon road just to get to it. Nobody else out here. Thank you, buddy. This is what I feel. It needs a it needs a controller. I agree. Controllers just puss. It feels like standard, like a stock something. I, I was gonna say it's kind of like a default tune. Right. But it's got all the potential. Seventy two volts. What was your question? I was gonna say the electric doom buggy. I don't know what it was. That thing. Almost. How was that? So we're still building. It. It's taking way longer than we anticipated, but it's we're, we're working on it. I really want to see that thing. Dude. So fun. Right. I think just like Jimbo said. This bike's got all the potential, but it could really benefit from a controller upgrade. I think that's what my very next video is gonna be with this bike, is a controller upgrade and trying to learn how to wheelie with the foot brake. Cause this is like the first video I've done in a while where I haven't wheelied and I need to make up for that. So last week I announced the winner of the Suron giveaway. And uh, right now I'm on my way to go pack up the Suron and send it to the winner. Now I can't ship out a dirty bike. So I'm pulling out my Charge PEV waterless wash for a quick clean polish and protect on this beautiful 72 volt Suron Supermoto before I pack it up to ship it to its winner in Florida. The winner tried the Charge PEV starter bundle, which earned him the bundle bonus of 500 entries. And that was enough for him to win this insane custom 72 volt Suron, which I'm now boxing up. This was much more difficult than I was expecting. It's a lot easier to unbox a bike than to rebox it. And these wheels are custom and they're way thicker than the stock wheels. And it really was a challenge to get this box to fit. Close it up with some ratchet straps. This was recommended to me by a professional and it was solid as hell. The delivery man came today, we loaded it up in the truck, and it is off to Florida to its lucky winner. If you'd like to be the next winner, check out the giveaway going on right now because there's three bikes up for grabs, which means there's going to be three winners, and you can enter in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. As I do. Yeah.